Welcome to the Key Chapters of the Bible podcast. This is a daily podcast that's going through the key chapters of God's Word. Today we're going to be looking at Numbers chapter 12 and reading about Miriam's rebellion and Moses' intercession. This chapter answers the question, who can speak for God? Can we just decide that we want to be a prophet and can we just go around and tell people, hey, I'm a prophet? Or is there something more to it than that? Well, let's dive into Numbers chapter 12 and find out. Verse 1 starts out with Miriam and Aaron speaking against Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. Now, it's possible that Miriam was instigating this because she is listed first in this verse here, and then later on, she is the one who receives God's judgment. Now, you'll remember that Miriam and Aaron are brothers and sisters of Moses. And so here they are coming to Moses and mounting their own rebellion against him, specifically because of his wife. They're opposed to his wife. Turns out she is a Cushite woman, and they are bothered by that. Cushites were related to Cush, the firstborn son of Ham, who was Noah's son. And so she's a Cushite. She is not a Shemite or a Semite. She's a Cushite. And that's possibly Zipporah. Maybe Zipporah was a Cushite, or maybe this is just a second wife. Maybe Zipporah has died or something else has happened. Either way, they're upset that she's a Cushite, and this is really just a ruse because we see their real motives in verse 2. They say, has the Lord only spoken through Moses? Has he not also spoken through us? And so this goes back to our opening question. Who can claim to speak for the Lord? And this would have been a serious question back then, because Moses was leading the people into the wilderness. He was leading them into the promised land. And there had been a lot of things that may have seemed like they weren't really going as planned. People were dying, and judgment was coming, and things were getting difficult. Was Moses really speaking on behalf of God, or maybe Miriam and Aaron can do a better job? This question is essentially saying that God is not specifically speaking to Moses, that God really would speak to anyone. You don't need Moses specifically. You can just kind of go to God yourself and hear from him on your own. And so this is an important question. And the Lord hears them saying these things, and he calls them to him in verse 5, and he says to them in verse 6, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, shall make myself known to him in a vision. I shall speak with him in a dream. In other words, the Lord chooses whom he will meet with. He is the one who chooses when he will speak and when he will reveal his message. And even then, it's not going to be with the clarity that Moses has. Because he says in verse 7, Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even openly, and not in dark sayings. And he beholds the form of the Lord. And so God has a special revelation with Moses. He has a special clarity of his prophetic message with Moses. And he says even that Moses beholds his form. Now, when he says that Moses beholds the form of the Lord, which means that God has a relationship with Moses that he doesn't have with anyone else. But it's interesting he says this, because if you turn back to Exodus chapter 24, God does appear to Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders of Israel. And Exodus 24.10 says, And they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire as clear as the sky itself. Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the nobles of the sons of Israel, and they saw God, and they ate and drank. And so Aaron knows that God is real. He has seen himself, and he should know the difference between God's communication with Aaron versus that with Moses. And so as this account goes on in verse 9, the Lord is angry with Aaron and Miriam, and suddenly she becomes leprous. Now, for what it's worth, when the Bible talks about leprosy, it's not necessarily talking about the modern leprosy of Hansen's disease that we have today. Like the discussion of cattle we had back in Exodus chapter 9, our modern medical terms are really specific. They're down to certain breeds and strains. But back then, they just had catch-all terms that could be used to describe a variety of conditions. And so leprosy is basically just a catch-all term used to describe a bunch of different skin diseases. Well, getting back to the passage here, Aaron sees Miriam's instant skin disease, and in verse 11, he immediately apologizes and repents. Then in verse 13, Moses calls out to the Lord. The Lord says he'll heal her in seven days, and he uses words that seem harsh to our ears, but would have made sense to them back then. And so for seven days, the entire camp of the nation of Israel waits for her to heal. So that's the chapter. Now, why is this a key chapter? Well, it makes it to our list of key chapters because it shows us the principle that we just can't make ourselves prophets. We can all be teachers of God's word. We could all be faithful students of God's word. 
But we can't just decide to be a prophet that God speaks to. It's his choice. And there are many people running around in this world today claiming to be prophets when they're not. A few months ago, I was watching some religious TV, and there was a guy that was claiming to be a prophet. And he is on this TV show. It's like a, almost like a daytime talk show. And he's being interviewed. And he spoke very eloquently and very powerfully, and he was very convincing. The interviewer asked him, how, how do you recognize a prophet? Can you help us all on out since you are obviously a prophet? Well, with that question, I paused and wanted to hear the answer. Unfortunately, the answer was just all kinds of man-made gobbledygook. It all sounded good, but none of it was the answer that God gives. God answers that exact question in Deuteronomy 18. Let's turn our Bibles over to Deuteronomy 18. Look at verse 20. This is an important passage to look up, so if you need to pause the podcast, go ahead and do so so that we can all read this together. Deuteronomy 18 it is an important chapter because it's prophesying the coming prophet of the Lord, but also helps us to know how to recognize a true prophet of God. And so in verse 20, it says, But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Verse 21, you may say in your heart, how will we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Verse 22, the Lord answers this. He says, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. And so God's prophets speak with 100% accuracy. Their prophecies always come true. And yet you hear people today all the time talking about how a bunch of their prophecies are true. Well, that's just like fortune telling. That's just hunches. God's prophets aren't fortune tellers and they're not giving hunches. They are giving the true, clear message of the word of God. And they are always accurate. Their prophecies are 100% true. And back then they had a bunch of false prophets and we have a bunch of false prophets today too. So if we want to hear God speak, you know where we need to go? You need to go to the Word of God. These are scriptures written by prophets, inspired by God, who spoke with 100% accuracy. Let us listen to their words as the prophetic Word of God. With that, we'll see you tomorrow as we continue reading about the people's rebellion against the Lord. We'll catch up with you then. Thanks. God bless.